In the previous video in protein metabolism, we talked about mTOR, or mechanistic target of rapamycin. We talked about its effect downstream, when, what happens when mTOR is activated. It inhibits some things that promote cell death, um, cell uh, suicide, apoptosis, and then other things that are more in the line of cell division, cell growth, cell differentiation. It really it stimulates all of these things. Okay, so the way to think about mTOR, because we talk about it in exercise science or kinesiology, mTOR is all about muscle protein growth. In fact, a lot of what kinesiology is focused on at an advanced level is we want to know what things stimulate mTOR. Because if, we're, our, if our goal is building muscle or teaching people how to build muscle, we want to know what things activate mTOR maximally. Okay, And we're going to talk about just a basic idea of mTOR activity post-exercise. Okay, Now, I want you to focus on the dotted line right here. So this is exercise alone in this graph. Now, you were, if you were to do any kind of exercise, but particularly resistance exercise, so this we're talking about lifting weights, heavy-duty anaerobic lifting weights, resistance training, etc. What you're going to find is after you exercise, you're going to find that the mTOR levels are going to be enormously increased up to about just short of three hours. So about two hours post-exercise, mTOR levels are going to be maximized. Why is that? mTOR levels are going to be maximized for a reason we haven't talked about in this, in, in this playlist yet. But basically, they're going to be stimulated because of mechanotransduction. It turns out that actually simply contracting muscles is enough to stimulate um, it's enough to stimulate mTOR, and that's actually done in a large part by calcium influx. And we haven't talked about that yet. But the point is, post exercise, we're going to have uh, mTOR elevated. Now we see that if we just exercise alone, the mTOR is going to fall. Okay. And it's going to decline, you know, 48 hours after the exercise. But what you notice, hopefully, is that if you have food also, if you have food and protein in that food, okay, so protein ingestion with food, the mTOR levels are much, much higher. All right, so what happens if I were to exercise like this, as I just discussed, and I were to, right after exercise, go and eat a giant steak? All right, so obviously steak is, you're going to be fed, which is this solid line, but then this little cylinder in here, I don't know what that is. That's protein ingestion. So I eat a steak. Obviously a steak, good lean steak, has a lot of protein in it. What I notice is that versus just exercise alone, my muscle protein synthesis, MPS, which is that we're indicating this by mTOR, mTOR is going to be massively elevated even over just simple exercise alone. Why is that? We'll go back to what we talked about in the previous video. mTOR is stimulated by amino acids. It's stimulated by glucose, and I'm going to assume my meal has some glucose in it. Maybe I eat the steak with some sweet potato fries. I'm, of course, going to have insulin present because I just ate. And all those things alone are going to increase muscle protein synthesis, or mTOR, much more than just exercise alone. This is why they say if you're going to exercise, do your resistance training, you've got to eat. You've got to eat, eat, eat. And the eating is not just to replenish the calories you burn. No. You have to have amino acids to build muscle. What is muscle? It's made of proteins, and proteins are made of amino acids. So you have to have amino acids present to do this process. Okay? You've got to have amino acids. Now, Particularly when we're talking about activating mTOR, there are three amino acids in general that are really efficient at activating it, and they're called branch chain amino acids. Leucine, valine, and isoleucine, and out of the three, it's been shown that by far the most potent of them, assuming all the amino acids are present, is leucine. That's why when you go and you buy a, a protein shake supplement, the powder usually, it'll say on the box a lot of times, loaded with BCAAs. What is a BCAA? BCAA stands for branch chain amino acid. And I will tell you this, if you go buy supplements that are just BCAAs, you can buy those in a drugstore. Usually it'll say on that BCAAs. Obviously that means it's going to have leucine, isoleucine, and valine. But if you look carefully at the bottle, it actually will have a higher amount of leucine more leucine than the other two BCAAs. And why is that? Because leucine stimulates 
protein synthesis even more so than the other two. All right, so you want to have your BCIAs, but you also have to have all the other amino acids present because humans synthesize for themselves essential proteins. They're essential proteins as an actin and myosin because they have every amino acid in them. So if you just had leucine, isoleucine, and valine, and that was it, you're not going to do protein synthesis. You have to have all 20 amino acids present, okay, because it's all or none. I can't make a protein with only three amino acids, okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. All right, so hopefully this picture, this figure makes sense. The exercise will increase mTOR, but I can maximize the mTOR by um, having food, particularly protein, with especially BCAAs present. All right, and also notice one other thing: eating the meal, you know, much later than just after the exercise, has much less of an effect on increasing muscle protein synthesis. Your best bet is to eat the meal pretty soon after the bout of exercise. All right. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos. In the next video, we're going to go over biosignaling and the, the details of mTOR. All right, thank you.